Hello, friends. Welcome to Noonish Prayer for Tuesday, August the 25th. Um, this is actually take two of my Noonish Prayer webcast for today. Not that you would have known it, um, but I thought it was odd as I was going through it, and I saw that there was not a single person who was listening live. And uh, I got to the end and realized that's because I had done, I had done the whole recording on my personal Facebook page, rather on the churches. So I'm sorry to be coming to you late. For what it's worth, I actually was on time today. Not that you'll ever know it. Um, so this is this is take two. So hope you're having a good Tuesday. I hope you are less confused and muddled in your day than apparently I am in mine. Today, uh, August the 25th, is National Park Service Founders Day. On this day in 1916, President Woodrow Wilson signed what is now called the Organic Act, and it established the National Park Service. Um, the National Park Service protects 400 areas in all 50 states and U.S. territories in the District of Columbia, totaling 84 million acres of land. Um, there's so much to do in the national parks. I don't know if you're a real fan of the national parks. I know that I am. In fact, Tricia and I have made it a goal that in um, our coming years that uh, we would like to visit as many national parks as we can just because we enjoy them so much and because we want to support them and their mission. But you know there's, there's things to do in national parks. There's all kinds of hiking trails, scenic trails, open spaces and recreational areas, um, uh, biking trails too. Uh, of course, the beauty of the land is just outstanding. One of the reasons I really love the national parks is because in every one that I've been in, even in Death Valley, if you can believe that, um, even in Death Valley National Park, there is such astounding national beauty, which makes me just be in complete awe of our creator God and all that God has made. Um, so, you know, and, and not to mention the fact that they protect the land from, from development, and so they're a conservation effort as well as making uh, the, the beautiful world that we have more accessible and available to all, all, all Americans and, in fact, to people from around the world. So happy National Park Service Founders Day. Um, think about visiting a national park sometime soon. There aren't uh, very many national parks right around us. Uh, I believe there's one in Ohio that I've never been to. Of course, there's Acadia in Maine, um, but it takes a bit to get there, but there are national, uh, there are national wildlife refuges, national um, monuments. There are all kinds of places around. So um, as it is safe to travel around um, to the degree that it is, I encourage you to get out there uh, and uh, enjoy the natural beauty and wonders of our world. Let us pray. O spring in the desert, O shelter from the heat, O light in the darkness, O guide to our feet, O joy in our sadness, O support for the weak, O Lord with us always, your presence we seek. Let us together seek God's presence by praying together the words of the Lord's Prayer, followed by our reciting of the Apostles' Creed. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he arose from again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Philippians. And you may remember that last week we finished up with the book of Acts, which we read from cover to cover, good for us. Um, and then we moved into the book of Philippians. I thought it might be interesting, both because it's coming up in the lectionary this fall, and also because it is one of the letters that Paul wrote while he was imprisoned in Rome, which is where we left him at the end of the book of Acts. But I was thinking over the weekend, um, while I really enjoyed using the message, which was the translation that, we, that I was reading from for the book of Acts, I really enjoyed using the message as we read through the story of the book of Acts. Um, I, I was not as crazy about how it was sounding when we got into something that's not so much story, but rather um, a, this letter of, of encouragement. And so um, if you'll forgive me and permit me, I'm going to go back to the beginning of the book of Philippians. Uh, we only were two days into it, so we didn't get that far. But back to the beginning of the book of Philippians from the new revised standard version of the Bible, which is the translation of the Bible that we generally use during worship. So here now, Paul's letter to the church in Philippi. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi with the bishops and deacons, grace to you and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God every time I remember you constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you because you hold me in your heart for all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best, so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. Here ends our reading from Philippians. Show us your mercy, O God, and grant us your salvation. Give us the joy of your saving help again and sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Give peace in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Keep the nations under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and sustain me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. 
The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. O God, with all your faithful followers of every age, we praise you, the rock of our life. Be our strong foundation and form us into the body of your Son, that we may gladly minister to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. O oh God, in you we live and move and have our being. Guide and govern us in this day by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but remember that always we are walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Before you get back to your Tuesday activities, whatever they may be, let me just remind you of a couple of things and tell you one thing. Uh, the thing that I want to tell you is that this evening on Facebook, our second council member greeting will uh, be posted on Facebook. And I hope that it will bring you comfort and joy and a renewal of your faith and energy and the strength that we have of community when you see your council members and hear their voices. They are your elected leaders. They are the ones who are tasked with keeping our ministry going and I hope that it will bring you great joy to be able to see their faces and hear their voices. I ask you as you view each of these council videos, would you please pray for your council as they continue to uh, steer this ship of the church through these difficult times? The reminders have to do with books. Um, you know that we have two books, uh, book discussions coming up of two entirely different characters. Uh, the first will coming up is uh, our discussion, our our what has now become a tradition of a book chat uh, on the book, Eat, Pray, Love. So if you've read that book or if you're reading it now or there is still time if you wanna get your hands on a copy and read it and come and have a friendly discussion on that book, um, it's coming up the, the second Wednesday in September. I believe that's September the 9th. If you can't find the copy of the discussion questions that I posted on Facebook, uh, reach out to me or to April and we'll make sure that you get a copy of them so that you can uh, be prepared to discuss that book. And then the second book is the book by Austin Channing Brown, I'm Still Here, and we'll be discussing that beginning in mid-October. That one will be a much more extensive discussion. It will last for six weeks, six sessions, and I hope and pray that you are considering joining us as we do our part, both as citizens of this country and also as citizens of the household of faith, as we talk about and think about and wrestle with our history of racism and help to figure out what it is that we can do to be more sensitive to that history and to dismantle the evil of racism in our church and in our world. All right, that's the end of my announcements. Hope that the rest of your day will go along uh, without a hitch. And I invite you now to finish our service. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.